Hi there, this is Animation. Today we're going to learn how to create realistic long shadows by detaching the drop shadow in Photoshop. Now, have you used drop shadow before? I guess you have. Now, what does the drop shadow do? Now, when you add a drop shadow, as you can see in this, it makes the object as if it's coming out of the screen. What if you want to make the object stand? For example, I have added drop shadow here and if you go to the properties of the drop shadow and if you increase the distance, this is called the distance. If you increase this, this increases the distance of the subject from the surface. In this case, you have added, we have added drop shadow in this circle, right? And as I increase the distance, what's actually happening is shadow is moving away and the object is coming towards you. What if you want to make the object stand like this? Then you need to detach the drop shadow. It's, the drop shadow is already detached, but then you need to take the drop shadow into a separate layer and modify that. So I'm pretty excited. There ain't nothing to it, but to do it so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and by the way, all the images shown in the tutorial is available for download. Check the link in the description below. Okay, so it's going to be very useful in creating composites, these creating shadows, right? So let's create a simple composite today to show you how it actually works. So what are we going to do? We're going to select this ball and we are going to place it here. So this is a round ball. So the best way to select it is using the elliptical marquee tool. But elliptical marquee tool creates an ellipse, right? We need to create a circle. How to do this? Okay, so to create any proportional object, one is to one. To create any proportional object, ratio one is to one, like square, circle, all you need to do, you need to press and hold shift, okay? So when you drag down, press and hold shift, see this creates a circle. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in to create a better selection. Now, when you create a circle selection of this, where to start a selection? The answer is, we don't know. We don't really know. It's not necessary that you start, if you start a selection here, it's going to create a perfect selection. So what to do? Here's what you do. Press and hold shift, follow along. Press and hold shift, okay? Hold down the left mouse button, drag and make a circle. Now, the mouse is still held and the shift is also still held. Now what you do, press and hold space bar. Shift is still held, mouse is still held. Press and hold space bar. When you press and hold space bar, you can move the selection, okay? So when you take the selection here, okay, it's good, okay? Leave the space bar, shift is still held, you're gonna make it a little bigger, press the space bar again, move it there, leave the space bar, make it a little big, and therefore you adjust. Now this is not a perfect selection, but you basically have the idea of how to do it. Now this does it very quickly depending upon what shape your object is in. Now I think this is a good selection. So I would make it a little smaller. There we go. That's pretty good. Right. Now there's a little bit left, but we'll let go of it. Okay. Now all you have to do, Controller Command C. Okay. Controller Command V. Now we have this object over here. Also what you could have done is dragged the whole of this image and, you know, paste it here. Then you would have just uh, select this and just like that and created a mask. That's also something you can do. But it's good to have a, you know, object kind of thing. We don't want to carry extra packages, do we? But here's the thing. When you're copying something like face, hair, important stuff, then you might want to copy it along with the mask the mask way. Because that way, if you lose something extra, if you erase something by accident, you always have the option to get it back by using masks. Okay. But in this case, we don't have much. So let's, it's okay to do that way. Okay. So let's place the ball somewhere around here. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now, you know what? This stupid vase is kind of distracting. So let's get rid of that. So select the background layer, make a copy of the background layer first. When we are doing something like healing or changing stuff, removing stuff, make a copy of the background layer, right? That way you have the option to go back. That way you have the option to see whether it's looking good or not, okay? It's not good to edit things in the background layer. All right, so select the lasso tool and roughly select the waist, okay? Roughly select it and let's try to remove it in one go. Go to edit, fill and then we have select content aware 
Color adaptation is checked. Okay. 100% opacity, normal. Click OK. Let's see what magic it does. It's filling and I'm hoping it does a good job. If it doesn't, we can always use the patch tool. Okay. So let's hope it does a good job. As you can see, this has done an amazing job just in one go. But there's a problem here. Have a look. This line does, just doesn't look right, right? Okay. So let's, how to hide it? The best way to hide it is this. Control command D. First, let's deselect that. Select the ball layer, turn it on and place it here. The best way to hide it, right? Okay. Just hide it. Now, you could have used the patch tool, but you know, that's more realistic that way. Okay. Now, time to add shadow. Let's place the ball somewhere around here. Okay. In the middle, let's add a shadow. Right click on it. Go to blending options. And you know what the shortcut of going to blending options is? Double click on the right hand side of the layer. And if it's not a smart object, you can double click here too to open the blending options. Right? You can also convert this into a smart object to be on the safer side because when you have a smart object, no matter how big you make it, then no matter how small you make it, it doesn't lose any pixel details. Okay. Now, when it's a smart object, if you double click on it, it will open another image where you can edit the smart object. But what always works is click on the right side of the layer and it opens up the blending options dialog box. Make sure you double click it. Okay. Now let's add a drop shadow. Okay. Check the drop shadow. It adds a drop shadow. Now select the drop shadow to just manipulate its properties. Now distance, anything doesn't right, really matter. You can increase the opacity all the way to hundred because anyway, we're going to edit that separately. Now uh, increase it to hundred. Then you can distance doesn't matter. Size, you can decrease it. You can make the shadow hard because anyway, we're going to use blur. Okay. So click OK. All right. Now what you got to do, it's really simple. Go to layer, okay, layer style, make sure drop shadow is checked and then create layer. Some aspects of the effects cannot be reproduced. Okay. Doesn't matter. Now drop shadow is on a separate layer. Have a look. Isn't that interesting? Now all you have to do, place the drop shadow just beneath it, just on its line, control command T. Let's make it a little flat, just like that. And the light is coming from the right. So where would the shadow be? To the left, right? So just to the left and let's zoom in and let's place it properly. Something like this. Now this is looking really cool, right? Now we need to add a little bit of blur to it that we'll add. Okay. Now let's add some advanced blur to it. How to add advanced blur? There's a filter in Photoshop called blur gallery, which allows you to add all kinds of blur, field blur, iris blur. It's really fantastic. Let's just show you. Okay. First convert this into a smart object, right? Click on it and convert to smart object or what you can do. You can go to filter. You can click convert for smart filters. Since they have already done it, this is grayed out. Okay. Then go to blur gallery, add any one. Okay. Let's add field blur. This allows you to add all kinds of blur in one panel. This brings up a completely new dialog box. This is very interesting. Now, what is field blur? Field blur is like Gaussian blur. It adds an overall blur to whatever object you select. So if I just go ahead and this is good. This is good. Just 28 pixels is good. Now let's come to iris blur, which is the crux of the magic. So let's bring this middle point here. So we want this photo to blur from this point. So in the middle, the shadow will be really hard. As the shadow goes further, it becomes soft, right? So this is the touching point. Place the point, middle point, where the ball is touching. Okay. Now let's make this a little bigger and just like that. Let's make this a little something like this. Let's drag it to the right just a little bit and let's make it a little narrower. And these are the points from where the blurring begins. Okay. So let's bring this points a little there. Okay. Now, if you increase the blur, as you can see, the farther areas get blurred the most and the nearby areas get blurred the least. Okay. So let's go ahead and increase the value somewhere around that. Now that's realistic. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Let's have a look. Have a look. Now that's looking nice. And once you're satisfied, you can also try tilt shift path blur. Just play with it. There's ain't nothing to it, but to do it only if you do it, then you will learn how these things work, how these things come into play. Okay. So let's click. Okay. Once you're satisfied now invalid numeric value, something wrong happened somewhere. Click. Okay. Again. Now this is fine. Now once the blur is applied, here's the advantage. 
Since this is a smart object, you can always double click on this blur gallery and that will bring back the dialog box so you can change the values if you want. But I'm not gonna do it because again it will take a lot of time just processing. That's okay. Now you can go ahead and decrease the opacity if you want. Just like that. I would go with somewhere around, I like, high opacities. 92 is fine. You can try different blend modes like overlay. Right? Overlay doesn't look good. Multiply was great. Let's change back to normal. Normal is good. Now, once you add a shadow, it is looking nice. It is looking realistic, but this part also is a little dark. So let's add a little bit of darkness to this area. How to do that? Create a new layer simply and take the brush. Make sure it's black and just start painting with black. Make sure the flow is somewhere around five or something and then just start painting. Now, don't worry about the color spilling out of the ball. Why? Because we are adding a clipping mask. What is clipping mask? Now, when you darken this, it darkens the outside area also. But if you press and hold alter option and click between these two layers, this black thing, whatever you do, will only be applied to this object. Isn't that interesting? Now when you do, no matter what you do, it just won't go out. So let's simply just paint in black to the areas we want. Just add a little bit of shadow there. There we go. Paint in a little more. Okay. You can also decrease the opacity later if you want to. From here, there we go. But I liked full opacity. And that's pretty much it. You can try blend if if you want. You can right click on it, go to blending options and take the slider off the underlying layer from the right to left if you want. Just add a little bit of realism to it. Just like that. See? what nice difference it makes, right? It makes it more real. So that's how you create shadows by detaching the drop shadow. I know there are tons of ways of creating shadows, but this is one of the nifty easiest way to do that. So try it. Now here's a quick recap. Number one, place the object. If you already have the object in your project, you don't need to. Then number two, apply drop shadow. How to apply drop shadow? Go to the blending options. How to go to the blending options? Right click, blending options. Right click on that layer, blending options. Or double click on the right hand side of the layer. Once you're blending options, check the drop shadow, manipulate the properties, opacity at 100 because it really doesn't matter. Click OK. Now once, once you apply the drop shadow, all you can do, you can go to layer, layer styles, create layer. Make sure drop shadow is checked create layer. Then convert the drop shadow into a smart object to make it non-destructive. Then go to filter, blur gallery and apply any blur, iris blur. And then when you apply that, you can apply all kinds of blur to that. Just check and change the values. Click OK and you're pretty much done. Opacity, blend diff and all that sort of stuff is your sidekick stuff to make it look more awesome. So I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.